Hi, this is the third video in a series on functional behavior assessment. And in this video, we're talking about behavior topography versus be behavior function. It would be very beneficial if you went and watched the video immediately before this, uh, Functions and Behavior, the second video in this series, um, before watching this video. And in that video, we talk a lot about uh, the four functions of behavior and that it's not about the emotion that is behind the behavior or uh, our perception of the behavior, but rather what purpose does the behavior serve. Another common behavior error in um, analyzing behavior or treating behavior is looking at what the behavior looks like. So a lot of times we say, well, they're tantruming or they're crying. Um, those are the topography of the behavior, and it's important to define the behavior. So at some point in time in the behavior intervention process, you are going to define the behavior based on what the behavior looks like. So you're going to say the child engages in tantrum behavior by laying on the floor, crying, screaming, um, flailing their arms and feet, uh, and throwing items. That's the topography of the behavior. That's where you're describing the behavior. A lot of times children have tantrums. They engage in crying. They engage in fit throwing. They engage in negotiation. They engage in disrespectful behaviors. They engage in annoying behaviors. Like I said, chewing on their fingernails or shaking their feet or tapping their pencil. These are all the topography of the behavior. Those things go into your behavior definition and they're used to guide um, what behavior are you targeting. But when it comes to behavior intervention, you are not focused on what the behavior looks like, but rather the function of the behavior. Because you may have a child that engages in tantrum behavior. Some children will engage in tantrum behavior in order to get a tangible. So you may have a child who uh, they say, hey mom, can I play on the iPad? And you say, no, you can't play on the iPad. And so then they engage in a tantrum and they cry and they whine and they scream and they negotiate. Well, if it's six o'clock on a Wednesday night and you're tired and you're frustrated and you really don't care and you said no just because it was inconvenient for you, at some point in time you may say, yeah, just get on the iPad. I'm, I'm tired of listening to you. Go get on the iPad. Stop screaming. Um, because you're tired and you don't have time to deal with it. And so you give in. Um, another time, and let's say you're in the grocery store and you have a child that's crying and screaming and throwing a fit because they want a piece of candy, whatever it is. They want a box of cereal or a bag of chips or a drink. And they're throwing this massive tantrum in the grocery store. Well, you see somebody you know down the way and these other people are looking at you like you're a bad parent and you say, I don't care what you ask for. You can have it right now if you just shush, right? Um, and so you give in just to save face. Well, what that child learns is that if I engage in tantrum behavior, then I'm more likely or my odds increase that I might get a tangible item that I'm requesting. Whereas if you say no iPad and they walk away, what are their odds of getting the iPad? Zero. If you say no candy and they sit and act like an angel, what are their odds of getting candy? Zero. Well, uh, sometimes you might uh, by the end of the store say, wow, I'm really impressed with how you did with that. So here, here's your candy. So maybe their odds are 10%, 20%, right? But it's not guaranteed. Whereas if I have a tantrum, does that increase my odds? Does that increase my chances? What's my history been to get those things? So in those cases, a tantrum may get you tangible things. Whereas in another case, uh, let's say I don't want to take a bath or I don't want to go to bed. Um, so maybe they don't want to take a bath or they don't want to brush their teeth. So maybe they engage in a tantrum for 15, 20, 30 minutes. They negotiate, they cry, they scream, they engage in those same behaviors. And you say, okay, you know, maybe you don't get give in in those circumstances. Maybe you do give in and you just give up and you say, okay, it's not worth it. You know, we're not taking a bath tonight, just get in bed. Well, then they get out of that. Or maybe you say, we don't have time to continue to handle this tantrum. We have to get out of this out of the door. I'm going to be late for work. I don't care if you brush your teeth or not. We're going. Well, in that instance, that tantrum worked to delay the task just long enough so that now they don't have to brush their teeth. Cha-ching! I won. Right? Uh, so tantrum behavior in and of itself, the behavior definition uh, or the topography of the behavior does not guide treatment. So where we end up in a 
problem is if we're defining our treatment based on what the behavior looks like rather than the function. So you really have to look at what purpose is this behavior serving because you can't give time out for every behavior. If you give time out for every time they engage in a tantrum, it may work if they wanted attention, if they get out of attention. So if they don't get attention during time out, but if I want attention and you send me to time out and then I'm crawling out of time out and I'm hitting at you and I'm kicking the wall and licking the wall and making myself sick um, from screaming for so long in time out, and you as a parent are talking to them and coaching them through this, now suddenly they went from not having attention to having all of this attention over time out, right? Um, so if attention is the function, time out may not be the best intervention. If um, escape is the function and you say, oh, you don't want to brush your teeth, you hit me because you didn't want to brush your teeth, you need to go to time out. Well, hey, I'll sit in time out rather than brush my teeth. So you can see if you take the behavior itself, such as hitting or um, tantrum behavior, and you do a blanket intervention based on what the behavior is, you don't necessarily treat the underlying function, and your intervention actually could be reinforcing or maintaining that challenging behavior. So it's important to look at the function of the behavior rather than the topography of the behavior.